How many lessons should we learn from this routine phaco emulsification case? This is a routine phaco emulsification for nuclear 3 cataract and as you can see everything went just fine and this is the last quadrant and while emulsifying the last quadrant you can see there is nothing abnormal here and all of a sudden while emulsifying those small remaining nuclear fragments inside the anterior chamber the posterior capsule was hit by the tip of the phaco needle i didn't even realize at that time i had a complication or break inside the posterior capsule so i continued phaco emulsification and i have just realized i have a complication now i have realized that there is a break inside the posterior capsule so i didn't withdraw the phaco tip outside the anterior chamber unless I inflated the anterior chamber and injected OVD, dispersive OVD inside the anterior chamber to tamponade the vitreous and prevent further vitreous prolapse. Then I moved forward for cortical cleanup by manual aspiration of the cortex. Conventional irrigation aspiration will cause disturbance inside the anterior chamber and would hydrate the vitreous increasing the vitreous volume and this would invite more vitreous to be prolapsed inside the anterior chamber and complicates the surgery so here i decided to move forward with manual aspiration of the remaining cortical fibers and every now and then i have to inject ovd to tamponade the vitreous otherwise the vitreous might be aspirated with the cortical fibers during manual aspiration i learned this technique from bob osher through one of his videos and i found this technique very useful in this situation where we have a lot of remaining cortical fibers inside the capsular fornices and we have a break or opening of the posterior capsule sometimes the uh, aspiration needs a lot of patience from the surgeon so and every now and then we need to in, in inflate the anterior chamber and tamponade the vitreous by dispersive ovd here i decided to move away from the area of the break because i had a suspicion that some vitreous had already been prolapsed into the anterior chamber so i decided to move away from the area of the suspected vitreous prolapse and not to invite more vitreous and stress on the vitreous base and eventually this might cause breaks in the periphery of the retina so here as you can see aspiration of the subincisional cortical fibers might be quite difficult through the paracentesis so we can do another inferior paracentesis for easier access to the subincisional cortex i'm trying to disengage those adherent cortical fibers from the uh, anterior and posterior capsular remnant into the anterior chamber for further aspiration through the side port or through the main incision but i found that the aspiration is not going well the notes vitreous has been already invited inside the anterior chamber and we can confirm this by injection of diluted trimcinolone acetate inside the anterior chamber and this confirms some vitreous bands inside the anterior chamber so this is the time to move forward with anterior vitrectomy this is the limbal approach anterior vitrectomy and uh, i started by using the highest cutting grade the vitrectomy mode here is irrigation cut aspiration i'm trying to clear all the vitreous bands already prolapsed inside the anterior chamber before moving forward to address the remaining cortical fibers and after doing uh, anterior vitrectomy i'm moving forward now with the irrigation aspiration cut so we can switch the vitrectomy settings between irrigation cut aspiration and irrigation aspiration cut here 
just irrigation aspiration with the adding cutting ability in case of vitreous has been prolapsed inside the anterior chamber so we can activate the vitrectomy cutter by further pressing on the foot pedal to position number three so we can switch between uh, instruments between the location of the instruments and as you can see we have still some vitreous prolapse inside the anterior chamber there is still some cortical fibers in the sub incisional area as you can see this is irrigation aspiration cut we can now aspirate the remaining cortical fibers as by manual irrigation aspiration and we can further activate the cutting ability of the vitrectomy if there is any vitreous has been uh, invited toward the phaco tip toward the uh, vitrectomy tip uh, during the aspiration now I've cleared all the cortical fibers from the anterior chamber. We can further inject dispersive OVD to prevent any vitreous from being prolapsed. We can confirm the absence of vitreous by injection of diluted trimethylone acetate inside the anterior chamber. And this confirms the absence of the vitreous inside the anterior chamber. So we can further inject OVD preparing for implantation of the IOL. I decided to implant the uh, single piece IOL although I had a large capsular break extended from one equator to the other. So here I'm planning to place the lens inside the capsular bag or the uh, inside the remaining capsular fornices and uh, taking the advantage of the slow unfolding of the hydrophobic acrylate single piece IOL, we can have enough time to manipulate the lens so the haptics would unfold at the area of the maximum capsular support. Here I'm confirming that the uh, uh, haptics had been unfolded on the area of the maximum capsular support from the posterior capsule i'm confirming now that the lens has been completely implanted inside the remaining of the lens capsule and one final step here is to do the reverse optic capture doing the reverse optic capture in ensure the stability of the single piece lens i'm now popping out the optic of the IOL inside the anterior chamber above the rexes and we can manipulate the iris tissue to bring it again above the lens optic so in this situation the lens optic has been placed in the sulcus while the haptics are placed inside the capsular fornices you can argue about the uh, arc syndrome potential arc syndrome caused by the shuffling of the anterior sharp edge of the lens optic again is the back surface of the iris but my personal experience is very positive with the reverse optic capture i didn't see any arc syndrome in these situations so after uh, injection of pupil constricting agent you can see that the pupil is getting down rounded regular we could confirm the absence of the vitreous inside the anterior chamber by further injection of diluted triamcinolone acetate and final irrigation aspiration to remove the remaining OVD inside the anterior chamber and this is the final check to make sure that the lens optic has been placed above the rexes and while the haptics are placed uh, on the uh, area of the maximum capsule support of the remaining open posterior capsule and this is stroma hydration before conclusion of the surgery so how many lessons uh, should we learn from this complicated routine phaco emulsification case first uh, i was moving too much with the phaco tip so here the irrigation has been blocked by the wound um, by main incision and this caused shallowing of the anterior chamber and bringing forward of the posterior capsule so it was hit by the tip of the phaco needle second the sleeve was retracted too much away from the phaco tip and should be placed further forward at this level third i didn't notice that i have even break inside the posterior capsule and I continued phaco emulsification, and this, of course, invited vitreous inside the anterior chamber. 
fourth or the and the final lesson here the limbal approach anterior vitrectomy invites more vitreous inside the anterior chamber and this eventually caused enlargement of the posterior capsular break and complicated the surgery even more so in this situation i would prefer to do the pars plana approach anterior vitrectomy because this would not invite more vitreous into the anterior chamber rather we can bring the vitreous back again into the posterior segment of the eye without enlargement of the posterior capsular break thank you very much for your attention